So in this video, we're going to be talking about my new VPS and hosting provider, Hostinger. Now, they did sponsor this video, but a stipulation to this being a sponsored video is that I can benchmark some of the other services I've used and some of their competitors, so you can see raw, unfiltered results of those benchmark tests. And Hostinger is not the victor in every single category. So if you're going purely off of benchmark results, this will feature AWS, uh, DigitalOcean, Linode, and Hostinger. After that, I'm going to be going over the services I'm using and the actual applications that I have currently set up on my VPS. I do use a VPS for some things that I do not want running on my home lab necessarily, mostly things that I want public access to without exposing my network. And of course, because this is a sponsored video, I will be going over Hostinger, some of the things they offer, so on and so forth. So first, right into those benchmarking results. I have them all right here on my Nextcloud instance. I have all the raw data. This will be linked down below. So for example, this is a comparison of a DigitalOcean 8 gig, AWS, Linode, and two different Hostingers. The reason I do that is it's kind of hard to compare Hostinger with some of these other services because there's a slight variation how much uh, CPU cores or vCPU cores and RAM combination is offered. So I threw them through different tiers in. And this right here is what the raw data looks like. And I ran a suite of a bunch of different tests that you could see here to go ahead and compare this. We have the Linux kernel compiling, we have cache bents, we have streaming, uh, RAM speed, flexible IO tester, SQL light, engine X testing, Postgres, C-Ray, uh, John the Ripper, and oh, a whole lot more. All this done was done with the uh, Pharonix test suite. I went ahead and built my very own kind of suite of tests that I think are relevant when it comes to picking a VPS provider. And then I used the tools at Open Benchmark to actually kind of compile all this data together to make it very easy to compare. And I primarily did that over here. If we go to images, you can see I have a bunch of images here. We have an overview of just the raw results and you are actually able to input pricing in these uh, kind of comparison things. So we have a price to performance comparison, which is super cool. When it comes to Hostinger, if I go over to VPS, this is the one I'm running right here. If I go to get new VPS, we want the KVM VPS. You do have a couple different server locations. We have a few in Europe here and two in the Americas. And then you have the option to select a variety of Linux distributions. We have Alma here, uh, Kali, OpenSUSE. I always just generally go with Ubuntu. And you can add it with a panel, so cPanel and a few others if you'd like to, or install specific applications. And most of the other services do provide this I used to cover Linode a lot they used to be a channel sponsor but ever since uh, Akamai bought them out eh, but really popular things ghost uh, XFCE with the desktop a bunch of different applications if you want to spin up a specific thing really easy uh, but if I like select plane I go Ubuntu we have the version here go next just kind of want to show you the pricing root password you have the SSH keys here and then here is the actual kind of pricing tiers. So we have the $5 a month plan, or it's actually after a while, it's $14 a month, one vCPU, four gigs of RAM. And that's where it kind of differs. With Hostinger, you tend to get more RAM and less cores than some of the lower tiers for the other plans, but pricing, this is generally just cheaper. All the way up to eight V cores and 32. Right here, I'll kind of post up a pricing comparison so you could kind of see what's going on. Comparing AWS Linode and DigitalOcean is a lot easier. Uh, AWS is actually incredibly expensive, more than I thought it would be, but that's the general kind of pricing scheme. The one I'm using is the most popular one. It's KVM2 with two V cores and eight gigabytes of RAM. Well, if I go over to Linode, or now Akamai here, and we wanted the same 8 gigabytes of RAM, but we're coming in at $48 a month versus $18 a month at their highest price. So it's really easy to kind of go on their various websites and compare prices in that regard. But back to this little Nextcloud instance I have here with all these images. If I compare the plan I'm using, we have DigitalOcean 8 gig, AWS T2 large Linode 8, Hostinger KVM2 and Hostinger KVM for VPS testing, you can see they all are pretty close when it comes to benchmarking. The further out, the better the score. We can see that Linode actually ranks the highest in a few different categories, such as SQLite, Flexible IO Tester, as well as Apache and Cinebench. The Hostinger KVM2 is kind of in the middle range of just about everything. I think it has the lowest uh, Engine X score here, just by barely right with. Uh, AWS, which I think is kind of crazy here. You can see AWS is just like almost a perfect circle below everything. And that being that it's the popular service, I was really surprised that AWS actually scored 
relatively low compared to all of these. I think the only one it took a win in is right over here, the uh, postmark benchmarking test. Now, if we open up the uh, price to performance for the same thing, so that's the eight gig, so it would be this one right here, only looking at the KVM2, Linode 8 gig, and DigitalOcean 8 gig, you can see that the uh, general best price to performance ratio is Hostinger. It takes wins almost in every single category, except for right here, uh, Linode does come out ahead again in the flexible IO testing. And again, this is mostly considering price when it comes to actually moving these uh, benchmark scores around. So when it comes to RAM speed, you have a very high price to performance, stream cache bents, cloud media streaming, postmark, OpenSSL, Apache, HTTP, and even NGINX when considering price, uh, Hostinger does take a slight advantage there. If we take a look at something larger, so if you wanted a huge VPS server, we tested all the uh, the 32 gig variations. So this one we have DigitalOcean, uh, T2 2X large for AWS, Hostinger, KVM4, and Linode 32 gig VPS. With the higher performance, DigitalOcean actually has a huge rating on the flexible IO test. And then when you start getting more performance, this is where you start seeing AWS actually taking some wins in some things such as John the Ripper, Postmark, Nginx, uh, HTTP just barely above uh, DigitalOcean there. And then we have Hoster KVM, you can barely see the line because it's just right in line with Linode with a, a little advantage here. It does do better out of all of them with the Akash Bench testing. And back on that flexible IO, um, Hostinger does come in third place and AWS is way down here. So basically, depending on what you're going to want to do, so if you're only going to have Nginx websites, if you're only going to run like a MySQL database, you can use these results to kind of narrow down to figure out what service is actually going to give you the best performance. And again, I do have some of the price to performance. So if I open up this right here, this is the price to performance for those 32 gigabyte VPSs. You can see the Hostinger, it's like half the price so it's obviously going to uh, take wins across the board except again for flexible io digital ocean really does well with this one and it almost does tie up with the node for the price to performance with that but across the board it's a really good bet when it comes to price and i'm not running a huge business enterprise i well i don't make really any money off of the uh, techhut.tv website at the moment so for me price is one of the more important factors so with that, what am I actually running on this VPS? Let's head back over to Hostinger here and I'll kind of show you at least their dashboard first before I get into some of my stuff. If I go to VPS, you can see I have it right here. If I click on manage, you get a lot of basic information such as the host name, IP address. We get some server status. So everything I'm running is using about 17 or percent of the CPU, about 60% of the uh, memory available. I'm using just over four gigabytes. And we have disk uses bandwidth. We do get a hundred gigabytes. That's pretty on par with some of the comparable uh, other services that are available. And the main thing, well, probably the easiest thing to kind of check out what I got running here is this right here. This is the uh, Nginx proxy manager. I'm currently using this for all of the techcut.tv subdomains that I have that I have running through uh, Hostinger. And the Nginx Proxy Manager is actually a fantastic tool to use in your local network. You can very easily set up a local host name to your domain on whatever register you use and then use this to give all your various applications, services on your home network its own unique IP or domain name. But starting in the top, we have archive.techcut.tv. I recently switched from Ghost to WordPress, which is hosted here. I'll get into that after the uh, VPS stuff. So I do have access to all of the old content, which I successfully ported all over to WordPress. That was a very difficult process. You can access our old Ghost website at archive.techcut.tv and see all the posts. Some of the images are cooked on it. Not all of them. See, this one worked pretty good. But this is the full carbon copy basically of our old website available for viewing if i like i accidentally didn't import an article or something i can still access this read only archive right here so basically we're running a ghost archive and if i head back over here we have cloud.techcut.tv i was using nextcloud on hostinger but for what i'm doing video files big stuff 100 gigabytes wasn't cutting it so i still have the instance up and running which i kind of just use for like documents here and there or if i want to share like a single video file to somebody so I don't have to share kind of my local stuff. I use this, but again, if you look up here, this is running locally, which I have access to a crap load of data or available storage space. So I do prefer to host Nextcloud locally most of the time, but having the option 
to share documents and stuff through my Tech Hut domain name is nice. Additionally, here within this single uh, KVM2 VPS, we have Crafty. So we have a whole ass Minecraft Minecraft server here. Oh, the okay. Ah, it expired. I need to go through and renew these. It's really easy to go ahead and renew SSL certificates on Nginx Proxy Manager, but just for now, I'm going to just accept and continue. This is how we're running our Minecraft server. Now, I have two of them right now. These are mostly like kind of personal things. This isn't the public Minecraft server, but Crafty is a really good service. It's probably the simplest uh, uh, Minecraft server backend dashboard to go ahead and set up. It is a single Docker container. So it's really easy in that regard and I could manage them here. So if I go to this one, we could see the whole terminal going on here. We have our logs or schedule backup. We could do use there a file browser here to go ahead and edit various files. It's really easy to actually upgrade the uh, jar files through this. Overall, Crafty Controller is something I'd highly recommend, especially if you just want to fire up a Minecraft server locally or even on a VPS like this. And actually in the server, there's very limited lag, no crashing with this one specifically because it does have more RAM. I've noticed it runs a lot better than some of the uh, other kind of uh, VPS providers that we were comparing earlier in the benchmarking. Now back to our proxy manager, we have Docker. So docker.techcut.tv, if we go to this, this is Portainer and this is what's running everything. Everything's ran through Docker on this uh, VPS here. If I connect to our local instance and look at all of our containers, we have 17 different containers running. We have the crafty, some of the ghost stuff, a lot of Nextcloud containers. And if we go next here, we also have the Nginx proxy manager and portainer. So that is my current VPS setup. These are the things that I prefer to host on a VPS as opposed to on my uh, local machine. And you saw with everything running a Minecraft server, proxy manager, uh, website, basically it's an archive of a website. Everything is running great. And now this is when we go back to Hostinger and talk about our main website, techhut.tv. If I go over to the main menu here, go home, you can see right here I have business hosting two websites. If I go to manage this, one of the websites, of course, is techhut.tv. I decided to run it on here instead of the VPS just because it's for me it's easier to manage. I'm not really a networking professional and something like my main WordPress website, I don't want to have to go and like restart the VPS, have it go down, have to fix issues, things like that. So I just use their generic kind of WordPress hosting for this. And at least on my end, I haven't experienced any significant issues with the website. So like right here, if I go ahead and run a speed test, let's analyze it. You can do this right through their dashboard. You can see it is performing very well. We have a 98. So that's telling me I don't really need to go do or add anything. I could probably improve this, but I mean, at the current speed, I'm, I'm not worried about anything. Go over to WordPress overview, close this. This is our general settings for the WordPress hosting here. They have a lot of their own plugins and tools here, but I'm personally not using any of them. I was using um, their AI thing, but I didn't personally really like it, but you might. And there are some settings here. We can flush the cache. There's security stuff over there. I have light speed enabled. I, you can set it to maintenance mode if you'd like to. And if I just click here, it will drop us into the admin panel for it. And this is it right here. For WordPress, I can actually kind of give you guys a rundown of what I'm running on WordPress if you kind of... Uh, run the same thing and you want to see what I got going on. I'm running blocky stuff. I have a chart block, which is really cool. I'll show you guys that in just a sec. Code block pro is another cool thing that makes uh because we, we do a lot of tutorial articles, copy and pasting codes that just makes it one prettier and two easier to copy the actual code blocks. I was using the whole essentials thing, but I switched over to essential blocks. It just kind of looks better. And uh, the performance is a little bit better. We have Lightspeed Cache, we have our newsletter, so I was able to import all of the uh, emails and all your guys' signups from Ghost to this. So occasionally we release a newsletter. If you're interested in signing up, there'll be a link down below. Uh, we have SiteKit by Google, Stackable, more blocks. I can use our Nextcloud sign-in to actually get into this, so you have to have a Nextcloud account hosted locally here to be able to even access this page, which is very nice. Visual link preview we added because Ghost does really good with that. WordPress not so much, so this makes it a little bit better. And then we have WP Code Lite and of course our commenting system. And if we actually go to the website here, I haven't done too much in terms of making it really pretty, but it's very functional. Our last post right here was on the Zen browser, which I'm currently using right now. And you could see the whole post, everything's looking pretty good other than the fact I forgot the N in my own name, which is wonderful. 
There's the comment system plugin. If I go down, this is the chart plugin, which is very, very nice. Gives you a nice representation, has the hover effects to see the data, pretty stuff. And then if I scroll all the way over here, you could see what that code block looks like. Really nice, I could just click this to give that a copy if I wanted to. And then even further down, we have the link preview, which it's taken an L for me right there. They must have changed something on their end. If I go back up and I go to a different post, let's go news, let's go to this one. There we go, that's looking a lot better. <laughs> that's what it's supposed to look like. So yeah, I've been using Hostinger for, I think three or four months now. I've had no significant issues. Everything's really easy to set up. They have a bunch of other features too. I was playing around with uh, setting up my niece a little website. But you can see here, that's still kind of a work in progress. I'm playing around with that in Playground through Site Builder, which works pretty good if you're just looking to make a real nice, like simple couple page static website. But for something like blogging or anything beyond that, you are probably gonna want to use some third party service such as WordPress, Joomla, Drupal. If you're experienced with those, those are a little more complicated. I never got a hang of them. But WordPress and Ghost are two, two really good ones to look at. So yeah, that's my whole kind of non home lab setup, things that are on some other service provider out there and is accessible to you guys. So ultimately, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Please go ahead and click the very first link down below. Also, be sure to use the coupon code TECHHUT if you decide to make a purchase because it will take off 10% of the total invoice if you go with an annual plan. Again, that's code TECHHUT. It does throw back a commission to us, helping us uh, invest in equipment, make better content for you. So I appreciate you guys, and I do appreciate Hostinger for reaching out and uh, sponsoring the channel. I did a lot of research on them before I went ahead and accepted this, and out of everything I've seen, there's a couple things. With any uh, online service provider, there are going to be people who have issues, but overwhelmingly, the uh, reviews and all that are generally positive and recommended. And at least based on my personal experience, I would definitely uh, agree with the general consensus. And if you're looking to not use a VPS, I will link down below to a video going over how to set up your very own server at home, which is something I would definitely highly recommend. Again, links down below to both sign up and all the benchmarking results. And I'll go ahead and post down below a lot of the different services, WordPress plugins, and a bunch of different things we checked out in this video below. So with that, have a beautiful day and good Bye.